What's up everyone, Trent here, welcome back to the Phantom Zone and we are here with the penultimate episode of Hawkeye, episode 5, Ronan. We got one more left after this, I am riding solo tonight, unfortunately Jules is away uh, for the week, so she'll be back for the finale, so I'm kind of hoping something big happens this episode, just, you know, for laughs. I mean, we got Yelena back last week with Florence Pugh coming back with that huge revelation and I'm sure something big's going to happen and I'm so keen, the title alone gives me chills. Let's check it out. Oof, what a look. to my rug. $20,000 down the drain. Oh, excuse me? <laughs> I don't think she was brainwashed. What, you thought I was some rich pervert's prisoner? <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Wait. And when we cleared up all of this mess, we will make good lives for ourselves. Yelena, how is your sister doing? Oh. She's doing okay. Good. Yeah, she was in. And then you and Natasha will be reunited and go live your sex in the city fantasy in New York. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, come on, you can read the Surely you can read the room that she's not receiving it well. I like that this plot thread is picking, picking up from Black Widow. Of still helping the former brainwashed agents. Holy sh... Oh. <laughs> oh, I just got pins and needles. If that... If that is the representation of what time was like passing in the snap, like, you know, you're there and then you're back, not knowing that time's passed, that's amazing. Don't hurt him. Elena? Oh my god, you're back. You're back, Molly. It's okay, sweetie. It's oh my me. god. Yep, great work. That is... I'm so glad they did that. Natasha, I need to tell her I'm okay. So this is filling in the gap between the post credit scene of Black Widow. Nice. What an open. I love that we got that opening even before the fanfare and the previously on. Oh. Yeah, just got thrown off a roof. This is all anything you do is Clint for you. Mom, no. Clint protected me. You know, we've got to know he then told me to come home and stay away from him. I love that we're getting these moments. Just these family, simple family moments. Sometimes the paths we're on, they wind around. Even on days when honestly it all just kind of feels like shit. Oh, look at it go being a good mom. You don't remember any of that. No. 
know exactly who you are. And I have a pretty good picture of who you're becoming. <laughs> a pain in the neck for my criminal enterprise. I'll tell you something. Potentially. Clint and I have been looking into our mom's murder. And we found a lot of incriminating stuff about Jack, mom. Including this shell company that he has called Sloan Mead. Maybe there's a, a reason for all of it. I don't know. But you just have to please just promise me that you'll look into it. That's all I ask. Okay. Okay, I will. You go get your mm. and come back home. Her emotions just went from caring to just blank. <laughs> yes. Hi. Oh, I love her hair. I'm in the Garoni if you want to come. Yes. I'm sorry, what? Well, I was starving and you took forever, so I wanted to make food. What, love her? What do you want? Relax, Kate Bishop. I just want to talk, okay? Are you really not hungry? This bite was so long. Really tasty. Really tasty. I, I don't know what Fox Pine cheese is. I did not expect them to interact like this. Delicious. So uh, soon. This is not about wood. My grandfather <laughs> just sit and have dinner with you after you tried to kill me and then just broke oh. into my house. I did not try to kill you. <laughs> a, I put you on a wire to remove an obstacle. And B, I did not break anything. I am way too talented in that. And C, <laughs> stop being so defensive. Okay? You're so hostile. I'm not going to hurt you. I promise. I don't have any weapons on me. No. Okay, I take that back. I don't have any weapons currently in my hands. You are a weapon. That's a <laughs> lie also. So what do you want? Well, it's my first time in New York. <laughs> Sometimes you're funny, Kate Bishop. Do you keep saying my whole name just to point out that you know it? Yes. <laughs> Tell me what love about you. Mother, Eleanor, lives on Park and 41st. Father, there, deceased. Very sad. And you recently walked into traffic to save a dog, which I'll admit is pretty cool, and you got a few points from me on that. <laughs> uh, university GPA, 3.8, senior, double major. Great, and okay, we get it. Thank you. I love this contrast. Are you in New York to talk to Clint? Is that why you're here? No, 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 no. I may have to kill him. <laughs> She's so uncomfortable. She is so confident and just out, outgoing. What is it? Why do you risk your best friend? Clint Barton. How has everybody forgiven him for his past? He saved the world. Mom. My sister saved the world. Natasha Romanov. She saved the world. You and Natasha's sister? Yes. Wow, I did not see that coming. Like, thank God I didn't kill you up there. <laughs> 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 nice try. Thank you. to protect his reputation yep clean up his past when you face the kind of threats that he has there's going to be collateral damage my sister is gone because of him no that is not she's gone she's technically not wrong collateral damage all i'll say is that if there's someone out there that is telling you clint is a bad Maybe you should ask yourself what kind of person hired you. He is not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but he is good. It's like the Vader Anakin. You know, Vader killed Anakin from a certain point of view. Okay. I 
thank you for the gold ring. Truly. That change in demeanor is very unsettling. Oh, and dear Bishop, do not get in my way again. Hell yeah! She's only been in two movies, or well, she's barely been in one and a half movies, and she's already such a badass. God, he's overconfident. <laughs> I love it. He's just such an arrogant ass. <laughs> I've clearly been framed. The OG lot. I still love that when she grabbed his hand in Endgame, that was him essentially being healed and letting letting all that grief go. Hey, it's me. Uh, listen, I know you said it's over. But it's not. Not for me. No. Call me back. We need to talk about the other woman in the group. Not mine. No, the other one. I don't want to say too much on the phone. Call me back. <laughs> Police arrested Jack, which is all pretty crazy. Would be great to discuss. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. I've screwed up a few times. Okay, fine. Whatever. I'm still learning. She went a bit Nick Cage there. Cliff, you think I want to leave all these messages like a crazy person? No, this is your fault. This isn't over. Pardon me. I'm gonna find you. The mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages. <gasps> <laughs> oh <laughs> oh <laughs> Maya meet me tonight for the first time at the home I just, I love how supportive she is. There we are, Fat Man used cars. <laughs> okay. <Let's talk. laughs> nice, nice one. Let's just talk about this. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. <laughs> he's gone full um I won't say a DC character. He's gone full a dead old. Oh, that costume's so good. Oh, nice. Go, Maya. Oh. <laughs> I love that she's holding her own. Oof. 
<laughs> what a look! Trust me. I know. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's come full circle. Whew. Kate? Yay! I love that used. Used in the corner. Subtle. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Maya. <laughs> this show is doing half truths really, really well. Like, they're not lying outright, they're not fully lying, they're telling. The truth, it's just part of the truth. You are screwed, Kazi. One more thing we should worry about. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, you know, for the girl from last night, the one in the, the mask. Uh -huh. Um, I spoke to her. Yeah. She said she's Natasha's sister. Clint's been hit hard, like emotionally and physically. <laughs> she is a mood. <laughs> Look at this. Who's that with my mom? Well, that's the guy I've been worried about this whole time. Oh! <gasps> Holy crap! They did it! I can't believe it! D'Onofrio! D'Onofrio's back! Oh. <laughs> At the start and the finish. Oh, goosebumps. goosebumps and shivers. Holy crap, I did not think they'd do it.
I thought I thought they were going to do a swerve or something, but I mean, my God, they did it, and the the whole the whole Maya being um, Maya's father being betrayed by an informant. Yeah, they 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 did it. Fisk, what? Well, I'm, I'm going to I'm just going to assume that Fisk was the one that ordered the hit. Wow, and that's why Kazi's not. Or oh, Kazi's going to get absolutely slaughtered. Holy crap. I, yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yes. So does that mean now? Because I, I never thought that the Netflix series were decanonized. I always thought they were just, they were always set within the MCU because, you know, Fisk rises to power after the Battle of New York. And they kind of never, I don't think they ever said that, you know, the Netflix series aren't canon. They just kind of distance themselves because of the the Netflix rights issues. But now with Charlie Cox coming in as Daredevil in the future, confirmed by Kevin Feige and D'Onofrio. Yes. So uh, has everything that's happened in the Netflix series happened or are we getting a new version of Kingpin? I love, I loved it so much. That whole episode. So good. Yelena. Florence Pugh, freaking nailing it. That first scene, seeing the snap, seeing the ramification of the snap, connecting the ending of Black Widow to Black Widow's post credit scene. And we, I actually thought um, midway through that it was um, Val that set, because I know Val, obviously Val came to, um, came to um, Yelena at, in the post credit scene. I thought she might've been the one that, you know, set her on Clint as opposed to just, informing her but no um if that number is yelena's at the end that the unknown number that's messaging kate yeah her mother her mother has been high her, her mother hired her to take out hawkeye and that it makes so much sense that they would have jack there as a scapegoat we the first four episodes we have seen him be put into a position where he's a suspect because he went to the the black market option to get the sword. I'm still not saying he's innocent by any means or not, not an accomplice in other ways or well, to this crime, but he's definitely doesn't seem that innocent or he could just be playing naive and, and arrogant and overconfident, which that arrest scene was fantastic. It is a mistake. Oh, I'll be out. I'll be free. Um, I, I just love his overconfidence, but no, we now get Eleanor fully being classed as the villain where there's been, as I said uh, earlier in the video, we've got all these half-truths and the way she's been communicating with Kate, it's the, I want what's best, I want what's best for you, but you have to do it my way. So she gives Kate a little bit of freedom and leeway, but not enough so it'll interfere with whatever uh, plans she's going to have. So again, that raises more questions as to whether her, um, whether Kate's father actually died in the house collapsed by the attack or whether Kate's mother ordered it like I said it in the I said it in the first or second episode I think it was the first episode reaction I said I'm, I'm not trusting the way he died so I have a feeling next episode we are going to have so many huge revelations we're go hopefully going to get a more than just one scene of D'Onofrio's kingpin but my god but yeah, the first scene with Yelena and then the interaction between Florence between Florence and Haley, it's something that I have wanted since Haley was cast. Those two on screen together, they have such chemistry and they were polar opposites. It was fantastic seeing just how different they were reacting to one another's um, one another's words and you know Yelena was so laid back and relaxed, you know, making herself at home, but being a good house guest and all that sort of stuff. And Kate's just like, I'm uncomfortable as hell. I don't trust you. You've poisoned that food. I'm not touching anything. I'll engage in casual conversation, but that's it. And then the change in demeanor when the playfulness disappears. And it's that if you get in my way again, if you hinder my plans to, ki to kill Clint, you don't know him. I don't want to hurt you either. Like, that was fan absolutely awesome loved that entire scene that dialogue and i just like that we're seeing clint get physically and emotionally exhausted like every time he tries to do something and tries to solve any of his problems another one presents itself or it goes it doesn't go haywire because it kind of goes to plan but then 
there's other forks that come out of it and he has to deal with that as well. So I liked the way that he dealt with um, Maya where it's the, you know, they're having a fight. He has essentially defeated her and she's just going to assume because she perceives him as a monster that he's going to kill her. And then he's like, no, that's not, that's not why I'm here. When that big revelation that he was tipped off by an informant so similar to the comics it's just it's just so good that kingpin's involvement is is in that as well with her father's with her father's death it's done differently but it follows a very similar plot line um but yeah i i like that this series is well each episode's being played differently this episode was very much a matter of perception where we perceive we each have our individual perceptions and we perceive things a certain way. Like Kate obviously sees Clint as a huge hero, whereas Elena sees him completely differently. They're not incorrect, but based on the information and based on the the interactions that they've had or very few interactions or the word of mouth that they've had, they perceive him very differently. And as I said in the reaction, it's, it's very much like Obi-Wan with the Vader killed your father. Well, yeah, Clint technically lost his grip well he nat forced herself out obviously but you know he he tried his best to save her but he couldn't save her so in theory in from a certain point of view he did kill nat or he didn't save nat it's all a matter of perspective and we've seen that so much in this and it's it's wonderful even with even with echo seeing clint as a monster because she witnessed him murder her father but him just him, even his self-perception, where he's seeing himself as a, a weapon that's trying to get out of his his seemingly programming, he shares that bond with Maya for that. So, lots to love about this. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Episode five did not disappoint from start to finish, and my God, next week is going to be awesome. It is going to be so good. And also, can we just talk about how freaking amazing Florence Pugh is fashion-wise? Like icon, style icon, Yelena icon but yeah next week is going to be absolutely amazing to see how they finish this and what cliffhanger we're going to get and what other series it's going to tie into like is it going to tie into secret invasion is it going to tie into um falcon and winter soldier uh, season two or um echo like what is it what are we going to be getting next week i don't know i love it i don't know if elaine is gonna you know go after clint or if she's going to have a change of heart because of her interaction with kate is clint going to make it out of the series alive like I think yes, but they they have set it up so well that they've built Fisk up to be an intimidating villain, and you don't want to piss him off. Like even without showing him or just showing him for that one second at the end, we know what he's like through seeing Daredevil. But we know what he's like because it's all it's all built on this fear and this we don't want to get the big man involved. Like they're all fearful from him. We all should be too. But anyway, tell us your thoughts on the episode in the comments below. I'm Trent. Jules will be back next week and we'll have much to discuss when she returns. But yeah, as always, keep it nerdy.